Merci d'être là. Euh, je vais prononcer quelques propos liminaires. Ensuite, mon collègue et ami, le ministre indien des Relations extérieures, s'exprimera. Et puis, il peut y avoir deux, trois questions. Euh, D'abord, euh, je veux vous dire à quel point je suis honoré et heureux de recevoir aujourd'hui le ministre indien des Relations extérieures, M. Salman Kurshid, pour euh, un déplacement qui intervient euh, moins de trois mois après sa nomination. C'est pour moi un honneur de le recevoir. Il sera reçu demain par euh, le président de la République. Et c'est un signe de l'importance que nous attachons à notre partenariat stratégique et tout à fait unique avec cette très grande démocratie qu'est l'Inde. Nous avons passé en revue l'ensemble de notre relation bilatérale. Elle est bonne, elle est même excellente et nous avons toute une série de projets pour le futur. Nous avons euh, eu une discussion dense et précise qui a confirmé le climat de grande confiance et de grande amitié entre nos deux pays. Euh, L'Inde est un partenaire stratégique pour la France. Notre partenariat est exceptionnel par son dynamisme, par euh, son amplitude, par son caractère équilibré. Il couvre de nombreux domaines. Je citerai particulièrement l'énergie, la défense, l'espace, la sécurité, le domaine culturel, le domaine éducatif, le domaine scientifique. Dans tous ces champs, nous travaillons ensemble et nous avons l'intention de travailler encore plus ensemble. Nos échanges commerciaux sont importants, mais ils peuvent encore s'accroître. Il y a beaucoup de potentiel. Et nous sommes décidés à encourager tous les mouvements, notamment économiques, à la fois la présence des entreprises françaises en Inde, des entreprises indiennes en France. S'agissant des échanges humains, nous avons l'intention en particulier d'insister sur le développement de la présence des étudiants indiens en France qui sont les très bienvenus. Nous voulons accroître euh, leur nombre. Et puis, euh, nous avons passé en revue, à déjeuner, euh, notre analyse de ce qui se passe dans le vaste monde, à la fois euh, dans euh, la région, euh, autour de l'Inde et des pays euh, limitrophes, mais aussi euh, sur le continent africain, en Amérique et en Europe. Et nous avons euh, constaté... Euh, à beaucoup d'égards, de grandes convergences de vues. Nous sommes unis aussi dans l'action pour la paix, dans l'action pour le développement et dans la lutte contre le terrorisme, qui est euh, une des grandes menaces du XXIe siècle. Euh, bref, euh, c'est une rencontre extrêmement utile, chaleureuse, amicale, qui laisse bien augurer des relations entre l'Inde et la France, et euh, elle va permettre aussi de préparer dans d'excellentes conditions la visite que fera très prochainement le président de la République française en Inde. Thank you very much, Your Excellency, Minister Laurent uh, Fabius, uh, distinguished representatives of the media. Um, I'm very happy indeed to be here in your very beautiful city of, of Paris. Um, and I have come here uh, as a reflection of uh, an existing very important uh, strategic partnership that we have between India and, uh, and France. And uh, I expect that this would be uh, a major step in broadening that bilateral engagement uh, even greater. Yeah. OK. Uh, Foreign Minister and I have had uh, uh, very cordial uh, uh, discussions. Uh, we reviewed, as uh, His Excellency said, our cooperation in defense, space, civil nuclear energy, counterterrorism, um, which are all very important pillars of our bilateral relations. Uh, we, India and France, share the values of liberty, equality, 
fraternity and our excellent uh, bilateral relations are uh, marked by what we consider to be a very special mutual trust. Um, and this encompasses trade, investment, uh, defense, security, counterterrorism, space, nuclear energy, education, culture, science, technology, and people-to-people -people contacts. And I do want to say that uh, uh, though this is my first visit to, to Europe, uh, and France is, has uh, been the highest priority, so the first country that we vi I visited in Europe is France. Uh, and I allow me to say this, uh, Mr. Minister, that in you, uh, I think I've discovered a very good friend. And I look forward to a very, very uh, uh, meaningful partnership working together with you for peace in the world and for growth of relations between India and France. The, uh, uh, I'd like to recall on this occasion uh, the meeting of our Prime Minister with President Hollande on the sidelines of the G20 summit uh, in Mexico in June 2012, uh, which uh, has continued this, this uh, very wholesome tradition of friendship between us uh, that I've mentioned. And now we look forward to, meet, to welcoming His Excellency the Pre President of France, President Hollande, to India in the very near future. Uh, we extend our congratulations to scientists on both uh, sides, on, in both countries, for a successful launch uh, into space of the Indo-French Joint Scientific Satellite, Mega Tropics, in October 2011. Uh, and I can report to you that the satellite is in good health, uh, and data from all the four scientific instruments on board uh, are being received in India and France. And uh, this has become the first of eight similar uh, satellites uh, that uh, we will uh, uh, be launching together in global participation measurement uh, in coordination with NASA. Uh, in this context, we look forward to the launch of satellite for Argos and Altica, uh, Sarel. And in the first quarter of, the 2000, of two, 2013, uh, this will be another joint venture to study sea surface uh, uh, altitudes. In the civil nuclear field, our government remains committed uh, to the Jaitapur uh, nuclear power plant. Both sides are committed. We are ensuring at the highest level that safety of the project, safety and security measures are, are absolutely tight. Um, the last uh, stage of negotiations uh, on, on uh, a few elements that are left to take a final call on uh, will be completed shortly. Uh, I deeply appreciate the uh, uh, response we've had uh, from uh, His Excellency on uh, our common resolve to fight against terrorism in the world and to, and to uh, secure the future of our children in the world. Um, we are conscious of uh, the economic conditions that uh, prevail in the world today and also in Europe. And uh, despite uh, these conditions, we, I think, uh, remain committed to an un the untapped potential for further growth. We are hoping that uh, French investments in infrastructure, food processing industries, high tech uh, areas, and green technologies uh, will, be, uh, will be seen in India in the near future. Uh, and in this context, uh, I would like to flag, and I requested His Excellency to help us proceed further with the broad-based India-EU trade and investment agreement uh, that will create the right uh, uh, ecosystem for uh, taking uh, our trade and investment cooperation to the levels that we both uh, believe are uh, there for the asking. Uh, in field of uh, science and technology, uh, we deeply appreciate the support the French government has given to bilateral cooperation uh, through CEFIPRA, uh, which is the India-France Center for Scientific Research, uh, which is celebrating its Silver Jubilee this year and serves as a special vehicle to take this cooperation forward. Uh, we've agreed uh, that the great potential for increased science and technology collaboration and uh, that uh, this will be, again, uh, achieved through CEFIPRA. Uh, with regard to French collaboration in the IIT Rajasthan, I'm happy to note 
uh, and to inform you that the letter of intent has already been signed and soon the project director would be appointed. I have thanked His, uh, His Excellency for the support of the Government of France for the extension of project to Maison de Land, uh, which is the most sought after hostel for Indian students and research scholars. Since we need to bring more Indian students and research scholars, we must make sure that we have adequate place for them under the extension project. 72 new rooms will be added and this will be completed uh, over the next two and a half years. Uh, the land's been donated by uh, by your government minister and uh, acknowledged uh, gratefully this very uh, important gesture. Uh, as uh, His Excellency said, I, we've discussed uh, widely uh, the situation in our respective regions and have agreed that this dialogue between us will be continued. I have promised that uh, we will see each other more often, um, both here as well as in India and other parts of the world. And I thanked uh, the minister for uh, the tremendous amount of support the French government has given to India in matter of world affairs, consistently voting in support for India's permanent membership of the UN Security Council, and we hope one day to live up to your expectations and your, your faith in us. Uh, we have uh, a very common, we've shared our views which are common on many of our regional and global concerns and we hope that uh, our exchange of views will help us formulate um, better propositions for our respective governments. I once again take this opportunity to extend my thanks to you, Minister, for inviting me and my delegation uh, to Paris for this very, very fruitful meeting. Thank you very much. Merci beaucoup, Monsieur Ministre. Uh, vous allez pouvoir nous poser des questions. Je veux faire écho à la bande dernière remarque de mon collègue et ami. Uh, la France uh, est un supporter fervent de uh, la présence de l'Inde comme membre permanent du Conseil de sécurité des Nations Unies. L'Inde est un très grand pays, c'est même le plus grand pays du monde, c'est une démocratie qui, sur le plan scientifique, technologique, a réalisé des choses magnifiques, qui a un rôle pacifique dans le monde. Et nous pensons que la présence de l'Inde comme membre permanent du Conseil de sécurité des Nations Unies donnerait à ce Conseil une autorité encore plus forte. Et nous souhaitons vivement que cette réforme puisse voir le jour. Quelles sont les questions? Thank you. Uh, I have a question for Mr. Khurshid. Uh, my name is Abhik Chanda and I'm from Agence France Presse. Um, border incidents involving Pakistan in the past, India has often taken the line that they're usually staged to deflect attention from national politics or to draw global attention to the Kashmir issue. What do you think is the motive this time? And a follow up to that is um, India has. Um, refused uh, Pakistani demand to have the UN military observer group do an independent kind of probe into the incident. Um, do you think you could possibly um, allow that because there are divergent versions of um, what actually happened and there's a case of supposed mutilation? Well, there are three, uh, uh, three uh, uh, dimensions in this. Uh, uh, first of all, I've uh, answered these questions uh, yesterday in India. And because uh, uh, fresh uh, inputs and informations uh, are coming in every minute, um, I would be uh, uh, careful about saying something here uh, that doesn't uh, tally with information that may have come in recently. Uh, I can certainly say one thing is that uh, it's extremely shocking and unacceptable is what we have said. Uh, we've even used the word barbaric, and I, I can't imagine that anyone would disagree with that on either side of the border. Uh, they take responsibility or not is another matter. Uh, we are still arguing about that. Uh, but it cannot but be described as being uh, inhuman and barbaric. Um, why should this happen? Uh, it perplexes me. I don't think uh, uh, anyone on the other side of the border is achieving anything wholesome uh, by doing this. Uh, we would like to analyze it more carefully. Uh, we do want, uh, while we want some redress and we want um, 
some uh, uh, transparency and accountability on this. We do believe that whoever has tried to derail uh, a wholesome peace uh, process shouldn't succeed. And therefore, we want to be careful. Uh, we want to be moderate in our response. Uh, but at the same time, we want to push uh, with determination to get some answers from Pakistan. Uh, we will hope for those answers to come. I, uh, it's consistently taken the position that issues that are bilateral between us, between India and Pakistan, uh, cannot uh, be uh, pushed into the multilateral field. I think we've taken this position in the past uh, when Pakistan went to ICJ, and I would imagine that uh, there is no reason for us to change from that position. Merci. Une autre question? Oui. Uh, bonjour, Where Christophe. Uh, Christophe de Croix de RTL. Uh, une question qui est adressée à vous deux. Euh, on a pris du retard, visiblement, dans le contrat concernant les rafales. Est-ce que vous avez pu avancer aujourd'hui un petit peu là-dessus sur les 126 avions qui sont prévus Nous avons bien sûr euh, discuté de cette question. Euh, la décision euh, finale appartient au gouvernement indien dans sa souveraineté. Mais euh, d'après ce que m'a rapporté mon collègue et ami, le ministre indien, les choses avancent bien. Et... Euh, Je peux vous confirmer le soutien plein et entier du gouvernement français vis-à-vis -vis du Rafale, qui est un avion exceptionnel, qui donne toute satisfaction à nos armées et qui a démontré ses capacités opérationnelles. Well, thank you for asking that question. Uh, I can only say this to you that uh, we know good French wine takes time to mature, and uh, so do good contracts. Uh, uh, contracts, uh, the contract details are being worked out. Uh, decision has already been taken. The contract details are being worked out. Uh, just uh, wait a little for the cork to pop, to, uh, to pop and uh, you will have some uh, good wine to taste. Merci. Yes, hello. This is by Junaravane from the Hindu newspaper. I just wanted to ask you about the EPR reactors to which you made a reference saying that India is planning to buy uh, two EPRs for Jaitapur. There has been uh, a report recently where the cost of the EPR has spiraled from 3.3 billion initially to 8.5 billion initially. And Areva has assured us that after all the experience that they have gathered from Taishan and Flamanville and all the mistakes that they have made in the first few prototypes, they will be able to give us a 15% rebate, a, a cheaper price on the nuclear island. But uh, it's only on the nuclear island. And the initial uh, guarantees that were given was that the power would cost less than four rupees per kilowatt hour. Where are we on those discussions? We are in a, in a very advanced stage in those discussions. Uh, the discussions essentially uh, have been delayed for two reasons. One, uh, that uh, how you structure the, the financial model uh, has, uh, has been looked at uh, in, in some modified manner. And I think both sides, therefore, need to uh, collaborate to find an acceptable definition. Uh, the other one, of course, is that we had to take uh, special steps to to re-examine the safety and security measures because of what happened in Japan. And I think uh, uh, the extra time that's taken uh, is well spent because this is a matter of uh, very grave seriousness to all of us. But I, I can assure you that things are moving uh, well in the right direction. And uh, uh, His Excellency and I have uh, decided that uh, we need to put timelines to push both sides uh, to come to a final formulation. It's only a matter of uh, uh, giving the final formulation an acceptable, acceptable st uh, structure, uh, and I think it should be achieved soon. I don't want to go into details that are actually negotiated by experts. Uh, I don't want to foreclose their options, nor indeed uh, uh, do something that uh, that will create a problem for them. But I can assure you that uh, we have a very, very uh, clear intent to move forward quickly. Merci. Oui, J'ai le micro, Harold Diman de BFM TV. Je vais poser la question en anglais. Uh, 
Bon, d'accord, vous avez les écouteurs. Est-ce que vous avez parlé euh, d'Afghanistan euh, je sais que l'Inde est présente non militairement, mais a un intérêt de tout premier euh, plan euh, dans le dossier. Donc êtes-vous confiant sur l'avenir après le retrait total de l'OTAN Oui, nous avons bien sûr parlé de l'Afghanistan. Je pense que nous avons euh, des analyses très voisines. Euh, la France jusqu'ici était présente militairement en Afghanistan, mais vous savez que nous avons retiré nos troupes combattantes. Nous restons présents pour... Euh, une aide civile et en même temps, comme nous sommes attachés à l'Afghanistan, nous euh, souhaitons faire le maximum pour que le futur de l'Afghanistan soit démocratique et paisible. C'est là où euh, la discussion avec nos amis indiens est très importante, puisque compte tenu de leur influence, compte tenu de leur proximité géographique, euh, leur analyse est tout à fait euh, décisive. Et euh, nous nous sommes retrouvés sur un double constat. D'abord, il faut que les Afghans eux-mêmes progresse pour, en interne pour une solution pacifique. Et il faut, deuxième point, que les puissances régionales, parmi lesquelles il y a l'Inde, euh, trouvent des terrains d'accord pour que euh, l'Afghanistan puisse se développer d'une manière pacifique. Monsieur, monsieur Fabius, c'est Laurie Inonde. Non, 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 euh, euh, mon, mon collègue et ami va répondre aussi. I agree with the, what the minister said. Uh, we were on the same page and we agree. Our analysis uh, is, is the same. And uh, we share each other's uh, uh, hope and expectation that all will be well in Afghanistan, but we have to obviously uh, walk carefully uh, in the manner in which the government of Afghanistan and people of Afghanistan would want to see us help them. Peut-être la dernière question Madame. Monsieur, Monsieur Fabius Laurie Inon de l'Agence américaine AP. J'ai une question au sujet de l'enquête euh, des tueries des femmes kurdes aujourd'hui à Paris. Est-ce que vous pourriez euh, élucider un peu la, la piste de l'enquête et comment il s'agit des liens entre la Turquie, Turquie et la France euh, Vous savez peut-être, chers collègues, que malheureusement, il y a eu hier, je crois, euh, trois euh, militantes kurdes qui ont été tuées. Euh, je ne peux rien dire de plus que le fait que, évidemment, euh, c'est euh, un drame extrêmement poignant. Et l'enquête a été confiée aux autorités qui doivent la mener. Et nous souhaitons qu'elle soit menée à bien rapidement et que les coupables soient identifiés et punis. Mais je ne peux à ce stade dire rien de plus. Merci beaucoup. Je vais raccompagner mon hôte et ami. J'aurais résumé les choses de la façon la plus simple. En disant euh, d'abord mes remerciements à mon collègue et ami, euh, le ministre des Affaires étrangères indien, et en disant que cette visite est une visite excellente. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Very Thank you. Much. Je vais vous raccompagner. Yeah. yeah.